The students on the campus of Badalabougou have had enough. But because of a fear of reprisals from the powerful Organization for Students in Mali, or OSM, only a few people here have agreed to talk to us. Mamadou and Moussa live on campus. They believe more people need to speak out against the violence, which has become a regular occurrence. Last year, in October, there was a bloody fight here, at this very spot. Several people were seriously injured, and one person died. This is where members of the OSM would hang out. Today, there are police units in the area that are tasked with watching out for large gatherings. When OSM members congregate, they're quickly broken up by police. But these students say the violence isn't just physical. There's also corruption and pressure by members of the OSM on teachers and university management. They show us a cartoon on the front page of a student newspaper. Why are you giving us bad grades? We'll make you pay, you bad teacher. A lot of the students would go through the OSM to get their university degree or to get a passing grade in certain subjects, even if they don't actually have what it takes to pass those classes and graduate. This has been going on for years. The OSM was founded in 1990 by students who took part in the overthrowing of Moussa Traoré's regime. The group began spearheading a movement to improve the country's campuses, quickly turning it into an influential union. But by 2015, the OSM was a very different organization. That year, clashes involving students armed with machetes led to the death of seven people. 350 others were injured on the Badalabougou campus. In order to end the violence, the Ministry of Higher Education decided last month to cut its funding to the OSM, funding which had initially been enshrined in two deals signed by the organization and the government. These students are hurting each other, killing each other, just so they can be part of the organization. Because as soon as someone becomes a member, they immediately get access to the huge financial windfall that comes from managing parking lots, student restaurants and various booths and stands. We've noticed that campuses have become areas of lawlessness, with reports of knives, firearms, thefts, rapes, kidnappings, threats and scare tactics. Back on campus, the secretary general of the OSM is meeting with these med school students who have been spared by the violence. All colleges will now follow the lead of the med school's OSM group. He's been accused of embezzling funds, but he denies the claims. Those are baseless allegations. I often see posts on social media that say the OSM handles a lot of money. I'm the head of the organization. If that money went to anything else other than the well-being of our students, I would be the first to know. Nyongali admits there is violence, but he says that's just a few people. There are a lot of us, which makes it hard to keep an eye on everyone. Some people give our organization a really bad name. I think that when we review and reassess our rules, we'll be restricting membership in order to have everyone's confidence once again. The organization's founding members, though, say the OSM does get some of its money elsewhere. The group has always been influential and capable of mobilizing the masses, which has served the interests of some politicians throughout the years. The OSM became a major instrument when it comes to the stabilization of the country. That's why the state is giving it more money to control our country's young adults. Soumaré Modibo, a founding member, agrees the OSM's raison d'etre used to be the improvement of the daily lives of university students. Being part of the OSM was risky, not only for us, but also for our family and others. But we were convinced that the goals and the ideals we were fighting for were noble. 
On souffrait les martyrs dans les internats. Would suffer. Life on campus was hard. Scholarships and grants took forever to arrive. But it gave us an opportunity to express how fed up we were about the difficult conditions we were experiencing. Other issues continue to plague the country's campuses, like the lack of infrastructure and the growing number of students in classes. Mali has the world's second highest birth rate, which will only make those challenges harder to tackle. The government has pledged to completely overhaul the country's education system.